It is new product time. Hit the song. Yeah, we got a little song thing. Okay. So first up, um, we have some reshoots. If you, if the, for the folks who watch our site closely, we're um, redoing all our photographs. New photos. Yeah. So we have, and these are just like good products to to introduce um, again. This is our FTD iFriend. Um, these are some of the new photos. John Janier is taking some beautiful photos that um, really show how um, I think great your designs are. Um, this is you can uh, see retrace now. Yeah, look at look how look how uh, beautiful this photo is of the FTD iFriend. You can just uh, see it. You can see a really good yeah. pick and placing. Look at that part. Yeah, and then we have the Minty Boost, and the Minty Boost. Um, we wanted to show that it works with the iPhone 5S. We have a, a black iPhone, a white iPhone. Um, we have um, it's charging, so you can see that it's actually charging, and then all the different parts, and then of course the uh, the mint in itself. That looks really nice. Yeah. Um, nice. A back in stock, the the um, sous viduino. The sous viduino, it's its nickname. But basically, if you want to cook food at a constant temperature over a long period of time, yeah, it's called sous vide. We it's have a little controller thing. kit. Yeah, we have a little controller kit that you can uh, that you can get now, um, and then uh, of course. New product. New product. Okay, we have great. goggles. We have goggles. So these are the goggles. They do something. <laughs> they do do something. These are actually kind of neat. They are. Um, oh, let me turn them on first. These are um, video glasses goggles, and they're kind of you know they're uh, some people are like oh like you know Phil had a Sony Glastron. He's actually showing this to me, and I was like I wonder if there's something similar that you can get nowadays, but isn't like a thousand dollars and. Um, we got these this basic pair of uh, video goggles, and then um, just to be clear, I don't think that they're actually that comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Um, they're they, you know they're kind of heavy on the eyes, I and mean, even if you're leaning back, it's not so bad. Um, they do work really well, which I was surprised. Yeah. Like the optics actually works quite well. It doesn't look like you. I'm gonna try see to a show screen. it on the overhead. Yeah, we'll show, I'll show it off on the overhead in a second. But um, I just wanted to show like you know, you, you're basically wearing it, and it looks like there's like a screen right here, and it's kind of. The sunglasses make it so that you know your vision is mostly darkened, which is kind of nice. And um, this is the actual vision system. And then the glasses themselves don't do anything; they're just like the holder. Like mm -hmm. putting these in ski goggles would actually probably make a little bit more sense. And there's a little headphones, and there's an adapter. And yeah, let's try to check this out on the overhead. Okay. So I plugged this into a Raspberry Pi to demo, yeah. and I just want to see what happens if I hold this up. Oh, oh yeah, what? look at that. You can see the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm, get, I'm getting there. If folks want to know if it's 16 by 9 or is it 4 by 3? It's 4 by 3. I don't know. It's 320 by 240. Yeah, but you, so can, you can see it, yeah. You just have it's to just tilt. really hard you to, just have to tilt. There, there you go. go. Yeah, you can see so it. So you can see one eye, and then over here you can see the other eye. And um, I just have it showing off the, the, the uh, you know, if you were had two vision glasses, um, you'd actually be able to see... Um, it's stereoscopic, like it actually lines up in your vision. Yeah. This, oh, sorry, can you? Go oh, you over? want to go back over? Yeah, yeah, over sorry. Right? I just wanted to show some more things. Okay. Um, it comes with a little battery pack um, that has a cable. And then um, there's um, sort of a standard composite audio, which I just left out. The audio is just a little amplifier board that goes to um, the earbuds. But then there's a standard NTSC um, PAL audio. It automatically detects whether it's NTSC or PAL. Um, and that works um, pretty well. Um, and yeah, so it'll, it'll work with like anything that has composite out, and it's 320 by 240. Um, but what I think what this would be most useful for, because you can see like you can remove the video goggle part from the glasses, which is this part. And I thought this would be cool to either put on like ski goggles or something, so it's like more like something you actually wear. Or um, I'm pretty sure you could cut it in half and take one half of the optics because I was. The reason I was actually kind of looking into this is I was wondering if I could get the the optics that's in the Google Glass, the, the yeah. display and optics. And I found the company that makes the display Google Glass, and they're like, it's $500 each. And I'm like, I think I'm going to find something else. Yeah. So um, this is not as elegant as like a Google Glass type heads up display. But um, I think we're going to do a teardown of it to check it out. Yeah. But I got these to start. I think this does have some potential for um, hacking. Or modification, yeah. and it's like a hundred bucks. Lots of people wanted to do a, um, a a wearable Raspberry Pi. This would be something you could yeah. do. Yeah, you could like maybe use one and have it on like um, a flip top or yeah. like attached to a hat. So this I think has a lot of potential. And again, it's like it's not a seven hundred dollar Glastron, yeah. so like or five hundred dollar Google Glass optics piece. So yeah. 
Um, yeah. Fun for are hacking. You, are you able to see it with, with cuz you have eyeglasses on? Ah, it does not work for people with eyeglasses unless you keep the eyeglasses on. Okay. For reasons that I I'm, I'm not an optics person, but because of the way that it, it works even though it's right next to your eyes, it appears yeah. to be like three the, the the TV appears to be like a couple feet away and if you don't uh, my vision's particularly bad. If you have fairly good vision and you can see a TV from a couple feet away, um, it'll probably be okay, but I would just I just put a warning. It's for people who have corrected vision um, or contact or their vision is pretty good. Okay. Next up here. I have no idea why that thing with it. Yeah. I, it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm sure there's some math with rays converging. I don't know. Math. Okay, next up. USB tester. That's right. This one's really cute. Um, it's actually um, a, a person who was selling on Tindy. Yeah, and, we thought it was a cool design, and, so we stocked it. Yeah, and they were using our OLED display to, to make sort of a more complicated version. I was like, you know, it's actually kind of handy because I was doing a lot of USB uh, voltage and current testing. So this splits the voltage line in half, and then you can see there's like these connectors, and it comes with a, um, a jumper so you can re-jumper it, but you can test voltage. You can plug into the uh, D plus, D minus line. It's just a little accessory. Um, it's just like when you're doing USB testing and you want to like, because voltage can fluctuate a lot from computer to computer, like one, yeah. my desktop here gives me 4.7 volts, like which is really lower, 4.8 volts, and then but my computer at home gives me like 5.2. So this is a way to like yeah. actually get good measurements on current and voltage. And uh, it just works with any multimeter. Okay, next up. This beautiful board. Yes, a little what, PWM board. A little PWM board. And what does this do, Lady Ada? This, oh, the, hey, wait, uh, if you leave it right there. I'll it's leave actually, it right here. Right there. It's a 12-channel, 16-bit PWM board. Um, it uses an SPI type interface, uh, clock in, uh, data in. Um, there is, uh, it can run up to 17 volts DC, and it can do like a chain of LEDs, which is really handy. Um, it is constant current. Uh, which is really good, so you can set the current, I think by default set to like 16 milliamps or something on, on the board, but you can change that with a through-hole resistor. Um, you can chain them, as you can change that with a through-hole resistor. Um, you can chain them as many as you want, and it's 16-bit PWM, which is rare. Usually you see 12-bit PWM, maybe 10-bit, but this one's 16-bit PWM, which means um, it's extremely good for if you wanna have um, very precise PWM control. Uh, it has an internal clock, which is really nice too. So you just turn it on and it just basically runs. Uh, but also means it's not good for servos because the, the clock isn't set to 60 hertz. Okay. So not good for servos, excellent for LEDs, can drive 12 LEDs. It's very compact, fairly low cost, yeah. very, completely chainable. I've got Arduino code ready to go. Just of these digital pins. Okay. Next up, and this is the last new product of the Oh, and it has a built-in uh, low dropout uh, regulator too, which is very handy. It has oh. a 3.3 volt regulator cooked inside. But you can connect an uh, external voltage if you want as well. Okay. Well, this is it. Look at this thing. Zoom. Okay. okay. TLC 59701. Yeah. Next up. Um, these are some boards. And why don't you go over to that computer right now. And yeah. you have a wireless mic, so you can start talking okay. about it. This is uh, kind of a new thing for us. We wanted to have some really cool LED walls and LED products. Here's a photo of it in action. Um, Lady Ada is setting it up right now. Here's an Adafruit logo. Here's the blinkies that we had before. Yeah, that's our that's a video. It's actually really hard to video an LED wall. Yeah, but um, let's go to the main here, and um, I'm gonna uh, turn off the lights. So I don't know. Yeah, it's really bright. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's see what we can see. You can see the reflections. Yeah, and you, maybe if you want to change it up a little bit to have some. I other can change on it. Yeah. Here. Oh, it's just it's just really bright. Yeah. Let me change it to the hamburgers, maybe. Hey, this is the portion of Ask an Engineer where we dance. Thank you. Yeah. So we're backlit. So you can see it, it is a video wall. But uh, you know, our our, um, our video is really good. We'll show the video. Yeah. Right now, she's showing some dancing hamburgers. Oh, I had already showed the the video, the the little the quick. Oh, snippet. little animation. Yeah. Okay. The quick snippet. Um, yeah, so we, we actually built a, uh, it actually looks a little bit better with the lights on because it's not as, as washed out. So yeah, there's little dancing hamburgers. So this is a video wall. Actually, I will, um, I will um, escape out. I don't know if this will work, but um, for example, I can, uh, I can see the Chrome logo. Let's see if this shows up. Does that show up at all? No. It's really, yeah, it's really, really um, out. 
Yeah, well, well, we have a, we have a really good video. Uh, unfortunately, we have nobody here who can help us with uh, doing this kind of LED videoing stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, the, it's basically a two foot by two foot LED wall, and we have these um, really cool LED panels that we've been carrying in the store. And I actually like you know figure out how to hook these up to a microcontroller. And these are the panels that are used for like big style LED walls, um, and they're tiled together one after the other. Um, on the back, you can kind of see there's these arrows that tell you like which way to chain them. And when you chain them together um, and you control them with a special controller, you can actually turn into like a video wall. And the video wall actually looks like a screen. Yeah. Like the Mac actually is like, you are connected to an external like HDMI screen or whatever. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, these in the store. And so I was looking at these and I was like, you know, I should see like what do people, because I, I actually got these from like a factory that makes LED walls. And I was like, well, I should also see like what do people use to control them for screens. And I actually tried to do this with an FPGA in-house, and it was really hard. We have a little FPGA kit, and like it kind of was really difficult yeah. to do, and we couldn't really get um, video on it. And so I was like, well, I want to check out what people actually use. And so I got um, a set of these uh, control boards, which are what are used to um, control video walls. And these are like actually like all video walls. Like I actually ended up later on going to an LED wall store um, which is kind of odd, there's one in New York, and I kind of like peeked around and I was like, what are, what are they using? And they're actually using um, basically these kinds of control boards. And there's one that has like, you know, video in, and it transmits to another one, which is actual LED control, and they both have like super hardcore FPGAs on them, which I'll show in the overhead, um, which makes them fairly expensive. Um, there's a lot of electronics on here. Yeah, I'll get rid of this uh, video goggles. Maybe I'll go here. So, let me get this, okay. So this is um, this is the transmitter card. So um, it actually has these like contacts, which look like a like a PCI card, but they are not used. Like this this connector down here, even though it looks like it plugs into a, a computer, it's only there for like mechanical mounting. Like if you want to put in inside of a tower computer, you don't actually need to put in a tower computer because not many people have towers. Um, and on this side, you've got bring this up. So you've got um, a DVI connection. You can connect HDMI or DisplayPort to DVI because it all uses the same protocol. You just need an adapter cable, which are like a couple bucks. Uh, USB, which you used to configure it to tell it like how many panels you have connected and like the width and height and like the setup and everything. And then these two Ethernet ports are actually how it sends data. It uses um, Ethernet, not internet Ethernet. It's not sending like packets, like TCP IP packets. I think it's, it is sending like low level Ethernet packets. Because uh, Ethernet's a really good way to send data, like 100 feet. And then on here, you can see, um, this is actually kind of cool. This is the T, TFP401, which actually I actually have been playing with lately. It's a, a really cool chip. It converts HDMI signal to 24-bit RGB. And then here we have a Xilinx Spartan uh, XC3S200A, which I don't know exactly how many um, gates or whatever there's in it, but it's a big FPGA. And then there's some buffer RAM over here. There's some SRAM. And then there's the um, ethernet. Um, I think this is f uh, two phi's and then the magnetics and then uh, you know sort of power supply stuff. So this is the card that takes the video and it converts it to 24 bit RGB, like real time RGB data. Um, eight bits of red, eight bits of green, eight bits of blue, a pixel clock, H-Sync, V-Sync. And then um, the FPGA grabs it, and I, I don't know what it does with it, but it sends it over Ethernet to the receiver. And the receiver card um, also has a Xilinx FPGA. It has the same uh, Mac Phi because it's receiving the data. And then there's this Xilinx um, Spartan FPGA also. And then it has um, these outputs, and these outputs actually go to the LED wall contacts here. And these displays, the LED displays are very, very dumb. They're, it's not that there's anything wrong with them, they're just, they're really basic. There's no controller in the LED panels. The LED panels are just matrix connected all together with some address lines and some drivers. There's no, there's no smarts in the panel, which makes the panels fairly inexpensive. So the panel, this is like $40 yeah. for like 200 plus RGB LEDs, which yeah. is a really good deal, because there's not a lot going on here. They're meant to be completely replaceable, completely hot swappable. Yeah. Um, you give them five volts, you give them the data in, and you're done, and then you can chain them. And so on the wall that we have back there, we have um, 
18 of these panels chained together and connected to the receiver card. And then you just want some software to configure yeah. it. You have to configure it the first time using Windows. Unfortunately, you have to use Windows to configure it. It has a little EEPROM you have to set up, and somebody could probably reverse engineer it, but uh, we just we don't really have time um, to do so that. How much current does this thing draw? This draws like at least 10 amps, because we tried powering it with 10 amps, didn't work. We have it on a 30 amp uh, 5 volt supply. Um, maybe I'll uh -huh. try to point it out. Right. And how many of these could you chain all together? You can do, um, one second. Um, there's a big, um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's this big yeah. power supply here. It's an old tower power supply, which can give you 5 volt. It gives us 5 volt 30 amps. I don't know what the heck uh, people were doing with computers that they needed 5 volt 30 amps. Maybe it was a server rack mm. um, controller. Um, but yeah, it, it draws a lot of current. Each panel draws like an amp or two. But it, it turns into just a video display. And so you can connect up to, it's like 1920 by 1080 or something. Yeah. I mean, it can control a massive display. I mean, like you'd have to get all the panels. And we decided we wanted to build something using like the, the extruded aluminum that we have in the store. Yeah. And it's two feet. And when they did the math, like, wow, that's exactly like six by yeah. six or whatever. So we just, we just cool. did, we, or three by six. It's three panels wide, okay. six panels tall. But it's totally seamless. And other stuff you can do is you can like. Um, oh, you have another little yeah. uh, thing. We made an LED cube. Um, we're not going to plug it in. Yeah, this, this, this I don't is have this set up. a demo for showing on the show, but this is an LED cube. So you can also take panels and um, connect them together. And, and we'll have a future tutorial about this, but I just wanted to show this off. Um, and you can make an LED cube. And then you've got um, this little Ethernet cord coming out, which is that Ethernet cable that goes from the receiver to the transmitter. And then we have a little power cable as well. And so um, we'll probably like hang this up or something. And you can do um, full motion video. Hmm. So the, yeah. the cool thing about these controllers is this is like, these controllers can drive massive displays. Unfortunately. There's nothing that's for like lower end. I mean, we have code that will drive like one or two of these little panels, but it won't do video. It'll just do like little animations or like text or whatever, like little drawings. Yeah. If you want to do video, you kind of do have to get these control cards, and they're and they're designed. The way it was designed is is so to make it so the panels are inexpensive and the controller is expensive um, because of these like massive FPGAs and this huge amount of RAM and like yeah, yeah they have to control up to like. Like I don't know, the like side of a building. <laughs> so I think they can control a side of a yeah, they can control a side of a building, which and it just plugs into any HDMI yeah. output, which is which is really sweet. So they are a little bit expensive, but the good news is that if you want to build a fairly large wall, you only have to pay for the receiver set once, and then yeah. um, the panels themselves are inexpensive, which is that's engineering, right? You have to do trade offs. Yeah. You know, there's going to be costs yeah, this, somewhere. Yeah, this is a cube. You can compare it to a Lady Ada. Hello. That's how we measure. Lady yeah, and we'll we'll show how. <laughs> We'll show how we made this cube later, um, and uh, these panels, yeah. and you can you know you can cubify them with it. It actually wasn't very difficult. Um, so this was a, a James DeVito project, yeah. and uh, he did awesome. And check out the tutorial on the Learn System because it's got all this detail and yeah. more. And that is. Do you want to just finish up with the? Uh, Which one? I already showed these. Oh, this one. Which one? I did. Oh, okay. I did. I showed all this. Right. I, felt, I was not here. I was looking at the thing. And uh, that is new products. Cube. Okay.